Let me show you how you can use generative AI if you work in finance, if you are in accounting, if you are in treasury, in fp &A, if you are a CFO. The first question I always ask in my trainings is, did you already use AI? And what is interesting, when you ask this question, almost everybody stands up and says yes. But then when you ask, did you already use AI for work? Then only 30% of the people stand up. And if you ask, are you using AI every day at work? You have maybe like five to 10% that stand up. And I want to change that. And I want that if you watch this video, you will be part of the people that will stand up if I ask how do you use AI and are you using AI every day at work. Let's dive in today to see concrete use cases and also to teach you something that you can take away and apply it right now in your job. Let me start with a small story. It was two years ago, I received a toy and it really felt like Christmas. You know, at Christmas when you get a video game or Barbie house or Playmobil, you often kind of stop playing with it. For me, it was the same. And you know what was this game? There was ChatGPT. When ChatGPT arrived and I couldn't use it, I was really excited, but also I couldn't stop using it because each time I was trying something, I was learning that the possibility of using ChatGPT were amazing. As I worked in finance more than 15 years, I started to use my knowledge of finance, my knowledge of technology, and combine that into ChatGPT use cases for finance. I am Nicolas Boucher, and I have actually more than 1 million people that follow me across all social media. And my goal is to make the finance team the AI champions in business. So how can you use ChatGPT and generative AI today in finance? Over the last two years where I taught to 5,000 people and to more than 100 finance teams like Mercedes-Benz, Hugo Boss, Chanel, KPMG, how to use finance in AI, I identified four categories. The first category is about productivity because even if we are finance people, we work with words and everything you can do with words, emails, minutes, presentations, translating text or making a text more simple to understand for your business partners, you can use ChatGPT to either write it for you or with you or to improve your writing and to be faster. The second bucket is about all of these long documents that we often build, which are the finance procedures. If you are in finance, probably you had this point where your internal control comes or your external auditor and they ask a procedure that doesn't exist. I was also in this case, and you have now to spend hours and hours and nights to build these procedures. But with ChatGPT, you can draft 80% of it. And here I'm going to show you how. The third one is about making you the best as using your tools like Excel, PowerPoint, SAP, Oracle, QuickBooks. You can have a, actually with ChatGPT, Copilot, and Gemini, a super assistant that knows everything about these tools and is available 24 hours, seven days a week. And on top, each time you have a problem, what is it going to do? It's going to answer to your problem with a concrete tutorials that applies to your problem and we will give you exactly the answer. So finito all of the hours you spend on YouTube or on those forums to try to find a solution. No, now you get it in a few seconds. And the last part, financial analysis. Yes, you can use AI to work with you on how to make better financial analysis. And I'm going to show you how. First, let's start by not making the common mistake, which is to use ChatGPT like Google. Using Google is like just giving into ChatGPT keywords. For example, here, if I have a problem with a client and this client didn't pay for a while, I will just put Dunning letter. And what do I get here? You will see that I get a definition of what is a Dunning letter, but I didn't get my Dunning letter yet. That's the problem with Google. The Google method is what we have used for 15 years. But imagine if we were working together and I wanted you to help me draft the Dunning letter. If I just give you two words, Dunning letter, does it work? No. What you need is to know the context. You need an instructions. Me to tell you, can you draft the Dunning letter for this client? because this client didn't pay for a while. And that's where I bring the CSI technique. Because if you want to solve a solution, you need to bring the CSI technique, which is C for context. For example, you explain that you are an accountant, S for being specific, and I for instruction. If you use the CSI, we will see how powerful is the CSI technique to bring us closer to our goal, which is to build the Dunning letter. And now we see that ChatGPT is bring us much closer to our goal. But actually, when we read through it, we can see that the letter is a bit too random, a bit too normal. And this client actually never pays on time. So we need something better than this. And for this, we're going to bring a second team to solve this issue. We're going to bring the FBI. So with FBI, you are going to use a second team, which will make you a part of the first person users. So the F stands for format, because you can ask ChatGPT to have a specific output, for example, 
we can ask to have a script instead of a formal letter. The B is for blueprint. The blueprint is when you are going to explain what you want inside the output. So for example, using words like legal actions will improve drastically the letter because it will be much harder. And I'm sure if your client see legal actions, then it will start sweating. And the I is for identity. With identity, you can give an identity to your chatbot. And here we can ask ChatGPT to act as a lawyer. Like this, we have a better output. So let's see together how we can use that. So here we see that with the CSI FBI proc, we have a much better output because we have words like legal actions. We have also a detail on what is this legal actions and the clients, when they are going to see that, I'm sure they are going to sweat and they are going to call you or to pay to you the money they owe you. We see together that the CSI FBI can help you. Now, let's dive to something much concrete, much adapted to finance, is about figures. And for this, let's imagine that you have a file with headcounts, with the name of your people, the department, the position, the salary, and which average salary is decided for next year. If I want to analyze that and I have a contract with ChatGPT, I can upload the data. Don't worry, later I'm going to show you how to do it without having a problem with data confidentiality. But in my case, I can do it. And let's use a McKinsey consultant for once that we can get them for free to do the work for us. So here we can see that ChatGPT got the data and that they are going to start to examine the data. And to do that, because ChatGPT cannot read files, ChatGPT is asking a friend, Python, to read the file for them. And Python is replaying back with the first five lines. And like this, ChatGPT can read the first five lines. And with this first five lines, can start telling you, based on how your file looks like, I propose this analysis, like doing a headcount by department or doing an analysis of the salary or average or trends and insights. And to do this analysis, ChatGPT will go back to Python and write the code and tell to Python, please calculate this form. And now we have the calculation in Python, but also the graphs in Python that we get in our chat. And in a few seconds, we have a part of the analysis that is done for you and continues with more analysis. This is really where you can use AI to start your first preliminary analysis to save time, but also to give you maybe insights and analysis that you will never have thought about. So now that we have these easy graphs, let's see if we can go further and do something a bit more complex. And I've done 15 years at count analysis, and I can tell you that the first time I saw this graph, that was when I used ChatGPT, and I thought, wow, this box plot, that's the name of this graph, is actually the best way to represent a distribution of expenses or headcounts. And since then, I am like just thankful that I learned something with ChatGPT and I continue to learn. So that's also the aspect of working with AI because the database behind is so big, you can learn much more and much faster. So here we got a complex graph, but the question is, can we actually do that in Excel? Because imagine I did that with fake data and now I want to productize that in my own environment. Well, I will ask AI and ChatGPT to tell me how to use it in Excel. And I'm not sure yet if I can do it in Excel. So I ask the question and actually I get a really detailed answer from ChatGPT on how to use a box plot in Excel. And what I will do is I will go back to the instructions. I will read the most important part and I will apply that in my Excel file. So I will go to insert and I will see if effectively I get the same type of graph. And here we see I get a box plot on the data. So now I am in my confidential environment and I get the same type of data, just 90 degrees turned, but I have the best distribution of my departments and salaries. And from this, I can give insights to my management. Now let's move to a second part of analysis, the cohort analysis. So with cohort analysis, what we are going to do is to analyze the behavior of your customers. Because what we want here is to see if these customers have certain patterns. For example, based on when they subscribe, if some of them stay longer or go outside earlier than the rest. And so here again, I will put my data. I assume that I have an enterprise account and that my data are not confidential. If it was a case that you don't have an enterprise account, I will upload and ask about the cohort analysis and also to get a visualization from it. Again, ChatGPT will use Python to read the file and to do this analysis inside Python. Like this, you know it's well calculated because Python is like Excel. It calculates. There is no hallucination inside Python. You can audit the code and then you get the output, which is an output that is really hard to do in Excel and that is called heat map. So the heat map shows here the retention rate based on when the customers entered 
So we can see like from January 2022 to December 2023. And we can see that in August, for example, we had customers that were leaving earlier than the rest. So that they didn't stay that long. And here we have an insight and we can continue to analyze to make sure that we don't repeat the same type of mistakes in our business. So now that I showed you how to do that in an environment where you could upload your data. The first question I always get is what about confidentiality? So, because there are a lot of problems doing what I just did. And the second problem is you cannot audit this because it's a chatbot and nobody has access to your chatbot. And the third problem is actually ChatGPT is not really good yet with large data. And the fourth, we talk about using AI to save time, to automate. But imagine having to do that on one of companies to do that every day. Can you imagine yourself going inside and replicate all of this process? I guess not. So this is why I'm going to show you how to use this method with confidential data. And here, what uh, we'll do is we will go inside ChatGPT and ask for the Python code. And the advantage of getting the code is that it will directly have a language that the machine understands that I can apply in my own environment. Let me show you an example. So I go back to my own environment and here I can use, for example, Google Collab, which is Google Doc or Google Sheets, but just for coding. And inside Google Collab, what I can do is access my data, upload my data, but also execute the code on it. Like this, I am in my secure environment. And I go back to ChatGPT. I copy the code from ChatGPT. I will paste the code inside Google Collab. Once I have the code, I just need to tell where is my data. So I will just go inside Google Drive, take the path, the file path, replace that in my code. Once this is done, I can play the code to see if in a few seconds I can take from Python in my own environment the same graph. And here we see we have the same result with still the anomaly in August. But the advantage here, everybody can audit it because my boss can see the code. My code is saved also in my own environment. So it's also safe and I can use with confidential data because I'm not in ChatGPT. And even if you cannot use Google Drive, you can actually use that in Azure or even on your own laptop. The only thing you need is IDE. It's a place where you can execute your code and that this code can after on your data extract the insights that we just saw now. And on top here, I did it on one file, but because it's code, I can do it on many, many files, multiple times per day. It's really fast and it's just one time to execute. And because we are in Python, you can do it on much larger data. So our four problems are now solved. Another thing I wanted to show you is how to use Python to automate tasks. You have maybe this case, and I had it when I worked in finance, where you have multiple sales files, either one sales file per month, here's the case. But you can also have these CSV files, daily CSV files, or multiple times per day. And the problem is to do your analysis, you need to combine these files. And I'm sure a lot of you are doing that manually, or maybe some of you are using VBA or using Power Query, but it's still really heavy and still takes a lot of time. Here, I will go inside ChatGPT and I will ask ChatGPT to give me the code to do this operation in my own secure environment, which is Google Collab, could be also in Azure. And because my files are saved in Google Drive, then I just need to show to the code where are my files. And when I do that, so you can see that they are here in Google Drive. When I do that, I can execute the code and get the combined file in a few seconds. I'm sure a lot of you are doing that with Excel. So you can imagine even if it's 10 files, you probably take 20 minutes to do it. And here we are going to press play and see that in a few seconds, the code executes and realizes the combined file. So quite a time saver. Imagine doing that on 365 files or 1000 files. It will save a lot of time. Now, I promise that you will also save time with writing procedures with AI. The problem with AI is that in a lot of LLMs, you have a context window. So you are limited by the input and output you can get in one answer. That's the problem if here. I ask to draft a memo, it will just be really basic because it can only write something as big as two or three pages. And we know like a lot of memos or procedures are 40, 50, 60 pages. So that's not going to be enough. The solution for that, if you have to do something big, but each output can only be one page, how do you do? If you need to do, for example, 40 pages, you do it in 40 times. You use the chunking method. And like this, you will be able to create your financial procedure in a much detailed way but also faster. Let me show you how to do that. So first, what we ask is we give context and we ask the outline because with the outline, I want to make sure that our document has everything I need. And for this, I need to start with the outline. When 
the outline is good, what I will do, I will ask ChatGPT to start writing each part of this outline. And I will write chapter by chapter this procedure. And on top, I will tell exactly ChatGPT how to write the chapters because I don't want to give too much freedom. I have a specific style that I like. So I will tell ChatGPT here, start with an intro, give the goal, do a step-by-step, -step, give some examples. And like this, I know each chapter will be written the same way. And then I say, let's start by writing one of the chapters. And like this, I have here a concrete chapters that is written for me, and you will save a lot of time by doing that. Once you have written one chapter, you replicate and you ask to continue with another chapter and so on and so on. And that's how you will save a lot of time by writing your procedures or even presentations, controls, and basically anything that is so big that you have to use the chunking method. That was it. So you learn how to prompt, you learn how to do financial analysis with AI, you learn how to do long procedures with AI. And this is something you can start now. You don't need to have an enterprise package. You don't need to have these crazy tools. You don't need to wait a finance transformation. Make sure that you don't put anything confidential when you use these tools and uh, you have not yet a contract with ChatGPT or Gemini or Copilot. But I showed you how. I showed you that you can use it without any confidential data and using financial analysis in AI, knowing how to prompt and drafting your procedures much faster will save you a lot of time, but also will bring you and your team and your colleagues into the use of AI every day. And like this, you will become a champion of AI inside your company. To help you start using ChatGPT for finance, I created a ChatGPT user guide that you can download right now. Go down in the description and you'll find the link. This is the best cheat sheet you can find, especially for finance people, you'll find all of the information that will help you to start using it now.